Hi guys, good evening. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of that once again great episode of AMC's The Walking Dead. I just got done watching it technically an hour or two hours ago because uh, as the credits were going on, all of a sudden uh, AMC tells me, and now a sneak peek special presentation of the new show, The Terror. And I just got done watching what I assume is the pilot episode for The Terror, and I loved it. I will get to that video shortly after I'm done doing this one. So as soon as I'm done doing the episode review for Walking Dead, you can uh, stay tuned for my uh, episode review of The Terror pilot episode shortly after. Before I begin, of course, please be warned that this is going to be a spoiler-filled episode review, like all my episode reviews, but especially for shows like The Walking Dead. So if you're not caught up on The Walking Dead by this episode or the past couple episodes, do not keep watching or listening as I will be going into giant spoilers. Uh, that being said, you have been warned. Spoilers from here on out starting now. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this was a great episode for so many reasons. Number one, I initially was afraid that uh, in the second half of the season, it was going to be a bit slower and not a whole lot of exciting action-packed stuff or sequences were going to be seen. Fortunately, my fears uh, were put to rest and I was proven corrected. I was proven uh, corrected. Sorry, wait, am I saying that right? Yeah. I uh, was proven wrong. I was proven wrong with last week's phenomenal episode and tonight's episode. Uh, that last week and this episode were both very, very exciting. And clearly the war has not stopped or slowed down. And things are still very much raging, for lack of a better words. We saw the Saviors attempt to attack Hill Tight with the intent of exterminating everybody. It almost worked, but oh, was it satisfying to watch the Hilltop allies get the drop on the Saviors on more than one occasion. They do the great move where they pull back, let the saviors move in, and all of a sudden they've got the saviors surrounded, and then they drive them out. Unfortunately, it was a victory too short to be celebrated because, as we all saw, the saviors put into good effect uh, their new method or of Negan's new plan of uh, having their walker blood, walker gut dipped weapons, and uh, stabbing uh, their enemies with it, and clearly. It worked. We saw it with Tobin, and we saw it with numerous other allied soldiers up there at Hilltop. And now, of course, Tobin. Oh, poor Tobin. I really liked Tobin. He was one of my favorite, I guess I would say, minor role characters in the show. I mean, he's been on the show, it's been, wow, like three or four seasons since season five, since we first met him at Alexandria. I liked uh, Tobin, and I also liked Bruce, because both of them were... A bit shy of Rick and his people at first as Alexandrian residents, but those two were the first to step up in their community and learn to embrace the things that Rick and his people taught the people of Alexandria. And they and he, they both proved to be effective, uh, skilled survivors and warriors, but now, sadly, both Tobin and Bruce are gone. So this was a bittersweet episode, simply because it was so exciting and so good, yet unfortunately we lost a couple of beloved characters. And our characters have suffered a pretty severe casualty as well. On the plus side, so did the Saviors. I mean, from the moment the uh, Allies jumped the Saviors on the gate and they opened fire as soon as Maggie yelled out now, we saw numerous Saviors go down in the gunfire. I mean, the Allies just riddled them with bullets. And we saw tons of saviors uh, fall to the ground. And uh, we saw it happen more than twice. There was like the first wave, the second wave, and then finally the third wave right before Simon and Dwight and the other saviors uh, finally retreated out of Hilltop in a few remaining vehicles. But oh, it was exciting to and satisfying to watch the allies get the drop on their enemies. Very, very satisfying. Up until the moment the allied uh, soldiers started to reanimate and bite everybody, uh, it, things were going pretty well for the most part. But this was a great episode. This was a great battle episode, I would call it. It was also a great Simon episode because I felt like we were really seeing Simon in his prime in terms of a leader. For the first time in his life, Negan is not around to bark at him or give him orders, and now he's calling the shots. And I love the fact that Dwight only expressed... Uh, uh, only expressed... 
a, a, a like a note of concern. He's like, well, are we sure we really want to kill all these people? Because what if Negan should, God forbid, come back and he finds out we've killed all the people that he wants to use as a resource? And he wasn't saying that just to uh, just to show his support of Negan. He was saying that so that they wouldn't risk killing or hurting his new allies. Plus, also, I believe uh, I don't believe that Dwight. Uh, shot Tara with an infected arrow. He probably grabbed uh, a regular arrow or a clean one because Tara did not turn along with the rest of the other allied soldiers who did turn eventually into walkers. And uh, Dwight, I think, does uh, still wants to prove his loyalty to Rick and his people. And uh, if he wanted to kill Tara, he very well could have. He only shot her in the shoulder. He could have very well hit her in the back of the head like he did his her girlfriend or right through the throat, neither of which he did not do. So I believe he just shot her to uh, show to give off a little show for Simon to uh, make him believe, oh yeah, I'm still on your side. But he wasn't. In fact, I don't think uh, besides shooting Tara, Dwight lifted a finger or a gun at any of the allies, which was good. But, oh, this was a great episode. I mean, a bit tragic. And uh, it was also a bit dark because we are seeing Henry. I got to give it to this kid. You know, he's showing some serious guts, but um, he's also going down kind of a dark path but perhaps he's going to be our new Carl so to speak in terms of a child transforming into something or someone else but uh, obviously yes he made some bad decisions yes most of the saviors and that prick Jared got away but I doubt Jared is going to make it till the end of the season however it is interesting to note that despite our allies' losses in tonight's episode, during the Battle of the Saviors and in the aftermath when their uh, soldiers turned and fed on the others, they gained some new allies. They got that friendly, less aggressive savior, and I can't remember his name, but it's the nice young guy who doesn't seem to be truly evil. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, but he's the one who didn't leave, and he's the one who told Maggie, hey, look, look, three or four of my buddies are trying to close the gate right now to keep the walkers out. And that's exactly what it was, too. We saw three or four other, uh, I guess you would call them former saviors, pushing the gates to keep the walkers out, to keep the walkers out who were attracted to the noise of uh, the screams and the bullets. So they've gained some new allies, even though... It didn't. Uh, it didn't uh, really matter that much in the end because they still lost uh, their most of their soldiers. But then again, so did the saviors. So I'd say this episode was very half and half in terms of losses and victories for both the saviors and our allies. But oh, it was fun to watch. So very, very satisfying, at least from the point of view of the allies. Daryl had some great moments riding up on his motorcycle and just opening fire on Simon, Dwight, and the other saviors. That was awesome. He took down a couple saviors right before he spun around and went back to the hilltop and then we saw you know henry trying to be a man and really trying to avenge his brother's death and uh i think you know he's pretty much a good kid he's just in a dark place right now hopefully he can take a step back into the light or maybe he'll become a full-on survivor so we'll see but uh I, I i just loved this episode once again it was filled with so many great character mo moments and great action sequences featuring walkers and uh, survivors against survivors and then speaking of character moments i loved how maggie had admitted to rick in private and to um and to uh, who else? Uh, Diane, I think, that she was really disappointed Negan was not there and was not amongst uh, the dead saviors. And then right before he turns, that one allied soldier looks to Maggie and says, oh, we wouldn't be here without you. If Gregory was still in charge, this place wouldn't be standing. You care about other people. And it's like, and you care about us more than you do yourself. And that really struck a chord with Maggie because I think it made her feel kind of guilty. Like, oh yeah, I really care about you guys and I in no way wanted to just kill Negan. But um, I think it struck a chord with her and I'm sure it'll stick with her too. But that soldier was right about Maggie for the most part. She does care more about others than she does herself. And I think she's just obviously, justifiably still very angry with Negan. And I hope she gets a shot at vengeance soon. And uh, hopefully that'll be soon. And since there's only three episodes left of the season. Wow. Hard to believe. It feels like the show just premiered yesterday, doesn't it? 
Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode review of The Walking Dead. I'm going to stop talking now so I can quickly upload this video and then upload my review for the Terror series premiere, which was also on later tonight. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content, and I'll see you later in a few minutes. And if I don't, have a great rest of the night, and of course, until next time, may the Force be with you.